Live from London, this is BBC News. Nurse Lucy Letby is found guilty of murdering seven babies at a hospital in northwest England. The families say they're stunned and angry. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Thousands more people in Canada have been told to evacuate their homes to flee approaching wildfires. Washington hails a new era of cooperation with Japan and South Korea at a summit in the US. And ahead of the World Cup final between England and Spain, the FIFA president speaks out on equality with men. Hello there, I'm Nancy Kachingira. Welcome to The Daily Global, bringing you the top stories from around the world. She is, quite simply, the most prolific child killer in modern British history. Lucy Letby, a hospital nurse, has been found guilty of murdering seven children that she was supposed to be caring for. And the failure of hospital bosses to act on allegations about her will now form part of a major inquiry. Overall, Lucy Letby has been found guilty of murdering seven babies and attempting to murder six others. The babies were attacked between June 2015 and June 2016 at the Countess of Chester Hospital in northwest England. The jury was told that Letby poisoned some of her victims by injecting them with insulin. Others were injected with air or force-fed milk. She was found not guilty of two counts of attempted murder and the jury were undecided on six attempted murder charges. Well, Letby, who had denied all the charges, will be sentenced on Monday. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. Washington has said it's now in a new era of cooperation with its East Asian allies, Japan and South Korea, at a summit in the US. Mr. Biden has been meeting the Japanese Prime Minister and the South Korean President at Camp David. The leaders have been discussing cooperation on security measures in response to growing threats from China and North Korea. Mr. Biden had this to say a little earlier. You're watching The Daily Global. Just to remind you, you can uh, visit our website to get all the latest on one of the big stories we're following today. Nurse Lucy Letby being found guilty of murdering seven babies who were being looked after on a neonatal ward. Now, these murders happened uh, at uh, the Countess of Chester Hospital. And uh, Letby, who is 33, is the UK's most prolific killer of babies in modern times. We'll have more stories for you after a short break. Stay with us here on BBC News. I'm Nancy Kachingira. You're watching The Daily Global. You're watching BBC News, the headlines. The BBC is told that 1,400 people have starved to death in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray in recent months. Ecuador goes to the polls on Sunday after a presidential election campaign marred by violence. And ahead of the Women's World Cup final between England and Spain, the FIFA president speaks out on equality with men. Thanks for staying with us on The Daily Global. The BBC has been told that 1,400 people have starved to death in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray since food aid was suspended in April. A senior Tigrayan official said the number of dead could be much higher. Now, this is happening after humanitarian aid to the region by the World Food Programme and its key donor, the U.S. government, was terminated. Sources who've spoken to the BBC say that the termination was due to corruption in the food and distribution system. Mercy Juma has this report. Around the world and across the U.K., this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. Ecuador goes to the polls on Sunday for the first round of a presidential election after a campaign marked by violence. Last week, presidential candidate Fernando 
Villavicencio was shot dead as he left a campaign rally. The assassination prompted widespread shock. Ecuador was once peaceful, but has been hit by widespread drug-related lawlessness and organized crime. Our South America correspondent Katie Watson sent this report from Guayaquil, where tackling the violence is at the forefront of everyone's minds. You're watching BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Guilty of murdering seven babies in her care, nurse Lucy Letby becomes the UK's most prolific child serial killer in modern times. Canadian fire crews battle to prevent wildfires from reaching the northern city of Yellowknife as all 20,000 residents are forced to flee. The BBC is told that 1,400 people have starved to death in Ethiopia's Tigray region since the West suspended food aid four months ago. Hello, I'm Nancy Kachingira. This is The Daily Global, bringing you the top stories from around the world. Now, here in the UK, she is the most prolific child killer in modern British history. Lucy Letby, a hospital nurse, has been found guilty of murdering seven babies that she was supposed to be caring for. And the failure of hospital bosses to act on allegations about her will now form part of a major inquiry. Overall, Lucy Letby has been found guilty of murdering seven babies and attempting to murder six others. The babies were attacked between June 2015 and June 2016 at the Countess of Chester Hospital in northwest England. The jury was told that Letby poisoned some of her victims by injecting them with insulin. Others were injected with air or force-fed milk. She was found not guilty of two counts of attempted murder and the jury were undecided on six attempted murder charges. Letby, who had denied all the charges, will be sentenced on Monday. Our North of England correspondent Judith Moritz followed the case from the start and sent this report. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. The BBC has been told that 1,400 people have starved to death in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray since food aid was suspended in April. A senior Tigrayan official said that the number of dead could be much higher. Now, this comes after humanitarian aid to the region by the World Food Programme and its key donor, the US government, was terminated. Sources who've spoken to the BBC say the termination was due to corruption in the food aid distribution system. Mercy Juma has this report. Do stay with us here on BBC News. You're watching The Daily Global. I'm Nancy Kachingira. We'll be right back. This is BBC News. The headlines. Guilty of murdering seven babies in her care, nurse Lucy Letby becomes the UK's most prolific child serial killer in modern times. Austria's former leader is charged with misleading parliament. Sebastian Kurz could face three years in jail if he's found guilty. As the World Cup final approaches, FIFA's president tells women in football the door to equality is open if they just keep pushing. Widely criticized for his response to the wildfires, the top emergency official on the Hawaiian island Maui quits citing health concerns. Welcome back to the Daily Global. Ecuador goes to the polls on Sunday for the first round of a presidential election after a campaign marked by violence. Last week, presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was shot dead as he left a campaign rally. 
The assassination prompted widespread shock. Ecuador was once peaceful, but has been hit by widespread drug-related lawlessness and organized crime. Our South America correspondent Katie Watson sent this report from Guayaquil, where tackling the violence is at the forefront of everyone's minds. Paul Mosse, around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. All eyes will be on the Women's World Cup final this Sunday when England's Lionesses take on Spain. It's the first time that both countries are through to the final, so a big occasion for both nations, hoping to lift the trophy for the first time. Well, today, the president of FIFA made some comments regarding equal pay for women that raised some eyebrows. You're watching BBC News. That's it for The Daily Global. Thanks for watching. I'm Nancy Kachingira. The Context is up next with Sumi.